Hey everyone, Holden here to talk about Skimbo's road to the top of the Madden Classic and how he was able to win the first major of the competitive Madden season. In doing so, he coupled together a dominant, pass-heavy approach on the offensive side of the ball along with a pretty simple yet effective defensive scheme involving consistently sending pressure at the opposing quarterback. Taking a look at his game results, we can see that he was continuously winning his matches with relative ease all the way up until the final four where he had two tight one possession games against Madster and Lil Man. With him winning games from the round of 32 onwards by a 12 point margin, he put his skills on full display while running through an absolutely stacked bracket. Let's take a deep dive into what made his overall scheme so effective. On the offensive side of the ball, he opted to run the New England Patriots playbook and was in his famous gun bunch for the majority of the tournament. For the most part, he kept it very simple and stuck to a small selection of plays aside from specific scenarios such as short yardage or the red zone. We can see here that from the round of 32 on, he ran 135 plays with 13 of them being unique play calls while averaging just over 7 yards per snap. If we were to just isolate his top three play calls during this same span, we can see that he was averaging nearly 10 yards per play. This offensive firepower led to him averaging just under two yards per play more than his opponents throughout this stretch. Now compare this number with Lil Man, who is the next closest in yards per play margin at positive .84, and you can see just how dominant Skimbo was throughout this tournament. Let's take a look at how he was able to effectively use his most called play Pat Sale throughout the tournament. This clip is taken from his Elite 8 matchup against Drini. With Skimbo up 14, Drini goes to a dollar defensive look in hopes of slowing him down. Skimbo goes with the setup that he ran the majority of the tournament. Max protecting in order to have 7 blockers, streaking the middle receiver of the bunch, dragging the outside bunch receiver, and motioning him outside before snapping the ball. In this case, Drini falls back into a three deep shell and attempts to user the middle of the field. The backside post route is really what makes this play tick. Drini knows this and commits to taking it away himself. Now to this point, Skimbo had consistently been dragging the receiver underneath, so Drini countered by going with underneath coverage involving a hard flat on the side the drag would be running into. With the drag bracketed and Drini on the post, it looks like the route combination has been smothered, but Skimbo realizes this and playmakers the drag up the field. This results in it getting behind the hard flat down the sideline where the outside defender was pulled inside to initially guard the backside post. With Drini completely across the field, he is helpless as Skimbo drops a dime to Tyree Kill for a 25 yard gain. This presented an awkward dynamic for opposing defenses as to how they wanted to play their outside coverage. If they chose to shade underneath, then Skimbo could simply playmaker his receiver up the field while if they chose to shade over the top, the drag would run open underneath the zones. As we can see, drags were by far Skimbo's most thrown route over the final 5 rounds, but possibly the most surprising number is that he only threw one post route. In this case, the route was better as a decoy than as an actual option as it more times than not took his opponent's user defender out of the equation. Flipping over to the defensive side of the ball, Skimbo favored the nickel normal formation just like most of the other competitors. The majority of the time, he sent five rushers while mixing up his back end coverages between what looked to be a two deep shell and a type of rolled coverage that looked like some variation of cover three cloud. This example comes from late in his semifinal matchup with Madster. We can see Skimbo hovering over the left guard to bluff a blitz and confuse the offensive line. At the snap, Skimbo drops back and brings pressure off the opposite side with the nickelback. This was a common setup throughout the tournament as it is able to overload and confuse the offensive line with a heavy pressure look pre-snap. We can see that Skimbo rolls his coverage and knows exactly where he needs to be with his user defender. On the right side, his outside corner stays in the flat while his left side corner drops deep and the safeties roll to the right. Skimbo, knowing his corner dropping leaves the flat vulnerable, he shoots out post snap to take away Master's quick outside reads. He is effectively able to guard three routes at once on this play between the halfback in the flat, the receiver on the hitch, and the tight end dragging across the field. With the right side flat also covered and the pressure screaming in, Matt has no option but to take the sack and live to fight another down. With offensive and defensive prowess on full display, what may have been the biggest factor in Skimbo's victory comes in the form of the hidden yardage. 
Throughout his final five games, his average starting field position was at his own 46-yard line. Compare this with his opponents beginning drives at their own 25-yard lines on average against him, and he was, on average, 21 yards ahead of his opponent per drive without even snapping the ball. His massive victory in field position, coupled with his tournament best plus 9 turnover margin, resulted in him consistently being in control throughout each game he played. With Skimbo taking home the first belt of the Madden season, be sure to tune in for the second major with the club championship live finals taking place on January 30th.